Hello everyone. So in today's video, we will be explaining about our new project, uh, the new product that we have been working on for the past few months, which is, which is WSO2 APK. Uh, so I'm Chamin Dias, and today we have the resource person. Our main resource person is Sanjeeva Malal Goday. He has been working, he has been leading the APK project for the past couple of months, and we would like to invite him uh, as the guest for the uh, to provide us the answers to our questions. So Sanjeeva. Thank you very much, Samin. We would like to thank for your time today uh, participating in this video. Without further delay, I would like to ask the first question about WSO2 APK. So I would like to ask, what is WSO2 APK and how does it differ from the traditional API management solutions that are already in the marketplace? Yes, Chamin. So WS2 APK stands for WS2 API platform for Kubernetes. And uh, it is a next generation API management solution, which is specifically designed for Kubernetes environment. So unlike most of the traditional API management solutions, which are often VM style software, APK embraces uh, fully Kubernetes native approach. So if I discuss uh, very high level features, it is uh, basically Kubernetes native software. And uh, we adapted the uh, microservices architecture and also we used Onoya as a gateway. And then uh, we are following Kubernetes API gateway specification for the mostly gateway configuration part. And we have clear data plane control plane separation as well. And also in the future, we hope to introduce marketplace capabilities and other API governance features as well. So overall, WS2 uh, APK stands as a modern Kubernetes native API management solution, which is addressing most of the challenges we are facing in API management domain. Uh, specifically in cloud environments. Okay, so I would like to ask the second question from you. So the second question would be, what are the key business benefits that organizations can expect from using WSO2 APK for API management in Kubernetes native environments? Sanjeeva? Certainly, here are some uh business benefit and uh, some advantages organizations can leverage using uh, WSO2 APK. So first one is uh, enhanced performance mm -hmm. and uh, scalability. So basically it leverages Kubernetes for the integration. And with that, uh, we can do efficient scaling as well as uh, performance, we can get high performance. And also it supports uh, basically agility and flexibility. Uh, like I said, uh, we adapted microservices architecture and uh, it will simplify API management for organizations. Uh, basically, it allows users to uh, apply and enforce API management without uh, too much effort. And also, it provides a comprehensive API governance, which is most critical feature for today's business because uh, most of the business uh, leverage APIs as their main uh, revenue streams. So uh, it's, again, one advantage. And also, we have some marketplace capabilities which helps you to integrate your products and services with the uh, outside systems. And also it allows your customers and partners to onboard to your system and uh, they can use your uh, services. So through that, you can generate revenue, you can expand your business. Likewise, there are a lot of business advantages as well. And of course, it's a cost-effective solution because uh, with the Kubernetes architecture, you can scale it, scale, scale up, scale down very fast. Uh, with the adaptive loads. Uh, so through that, you can reduce your uh, total cost of ownership. And also it provides enhanced developer experience, uh, which will again attract users and the community to your system. And also it's a future proof uh, solution. So basically as organization, you can plan your future API management strategy with WC2 APK. So these are some of the main business advantages and the technical advantages organizations are getting. Excellent. That answer was really great. So with that, I would like to move to the next question, which is what are the main components of WSO2 APK and how do they work together to manage APIs in Kubernetes? Sanjeeva? Yeah. Okay. So APK consists uh, two main components. So the first component is data plane. Second component is the uh, control plane. So data plane and the control plane together uh, provide complete API management solution. So if I start with the data plane, 
సో డేటా ప్లేన్ ఇస్ ద కోర్ రన్ టైమ్ కాంపోనెంట్ విచ్ ఈస్ మెయిన్లీ రెస్పాన్సిబుల్ ఫర్ హ్యాండ్లింగ్ ఏపీఐ ట్రాఫిక్ అండ్ ది యాక్సెస్ కంట్రోల్ పార్ట్ సో ఇట్ మెయిన్లీ కన్సిస్ట్ లైక్ టూ కన్ఫిక్ సర్వీస్ బేసికలీ కన్ఫిక్ సర్వీస్ అండ్ డిప్లో సర్వీస్ సో దోస్ సర్వీసెస్ హెల్ప్ పాస్ టు కన్ఫిగర్ ద డేటా ప్లేన్ అండ్ ఆల్సో ఆఫ్ కోర్స్ ఇన్ ద డేటా ప్లేన్ సైడ్ వీ హ్యావ్ లైక్ గేట్ వే కాంపోనెంట్ రౌట్ ఎన్ ఫోర్స్ అండ్ అడాప్టర్ మెయిన్లీ ఇంటర్సెప్ట్ యువర్ ట్రాఫిక్ అండ్ అప్లై క్వాలిటీ ఆఫ్ సర్వీసెస్ and also uh if i discuss about the control plane side of the thing uh, control plane side we have a set of domain services which are responsible for uh, your control plane operations so basically api developer portal api back office uh, and uh, administrative functions so all these capabilities provided using the control plane uh, so these two are the main components and uh, of course you can see in this diagram uh we have uh, control plane and data plane so in top you can see control plane components and uh, below you see the data plane components so when it comes to scale and the deployment part data plane is the most critical thing because uh, that is where we hit actual api traffic and uh, quality of services authentication authorization all these things happen there uh, so scaling uh, horizontally scaling vertical scaling so all these things are supported in the data plane so that is very high level uh, component architecture but of course later we can go into details about these components thanks that's a really good answer and it it explains the architect overall architecture of uh, wso2 apk so with that i would like to move to the next question which is what role does the envoy proxy play in wso2 apk and why was it chosen at the core of this solution sanjeeva yes so when we start Uh, developing apk we evaluated a uh, few gateway options so as you already know uh, in ws2 uh, api manager we are having uh, synapse gateway support as well as we have uh, corio connect gateway support so uh, so we considered uh, uh, different gateway options we are having so when we consider this uh, so obviously one of the main uh, vendor that we selected was the onvoy because uh, so we started working with onvoy uh, way back 2021 and uh, we have been using that for korea for like more than 2 years now and uh, we are pretty confident about that and we have done some modifications and some customizations as well uh, so with that in mind uh, we decided to use onvoy and obviously there are some other reasons as well like uh, it's a, it's a, it's very good for performance and scalability and also it's uh, kubernetes native basically it fits very well with the kubernetes ecosystem and also it provides a uh, great extensibility and flexibility support as well so basically you can customize it very easily and also community adoption is uh, one other key area uh, that we focus because uh, it's also important and also it Uh, can easily integrate with the kubernetes api gateway specification uh, so these are the main uh, reasons behind our motivation to go for uh, onvoy based gateway that's a really great answer about the, uh, for the question that i asked uh, so sanjeeva the next question that i have for you is how does wso2 apk support microservices architecture in other words msa and what advantages this the seat of for the developers because uh, developers are one of the main target audience of this one yeah yes so uh, so if we consider uh, wso2 apk architecture like i said early uh, so almost all the operations uh, now running as a microservices so for example if you consider uh, api manager main product uh, so there we had profiles of course Uh, but all these things uh, ran on a single runtime uh, so when we uh, design apk we decided to have separate microservices for each of these functionalities so for example if we consider administrative capabilities we have separate domain service for that and also if we consider developer portal operations we will have separate domain service for that similarly api back office we will have separate domain service for that as well so these uh, different domain services you can deploy individually and also you can scale individually so based on the load uh, so let's say you are getting very high traffic for developer portal so in that case you can scale only uh, that particular domain service 
So likewise, uh, we can very easily uh, scale the system. And when it comes to deployment, agility and flexibility related aspects are there. And also it provides better isolation and the resilience as well. And it can efficiently collaborate with other microservices as well because uh, we have clear boundaries defined. And uh, when it comes to communication between these domain services, we have very well defined interfaces and uh, we can do very efficient collaboration and communication across these things. And like I said earlier, it's very easy to scale the system when we have a microservice architecture. And also it supports uh, uh, like uh, crowd native principles basically. Uh, so, so if you are doing uh, APK cloud deployment, so then you can uh, use these principles. So uh, as a developer, uh, you can uh, invoke with these uh, separate domain services with different permissions and uh, achieve your targets. And also it's not just help for uh, developers, it's also help for uh, sysadmins and system maintainers as well. Because when it comes to deployment, they can easily uh, deploy these separate components uh, and they can scale them separately and uh, they can govern, monitor uh, these things separately. So these are the main advantages of uh, microservices architecture. Yeah, thank you for that answer. So with that, uh, I would like to uh, give you the, the next question, which is, uh, can you elaborate on how WSO2 APK leverages uh, Kubernetes namespace clusters and custom resources, in other words, uh, CRDs? Certainly. So WS2 APK leverages uh, so all these things and provide uh, seamless and efficient API management experience in the Kubernetes. So if I start with the namespace, WS2 APK makes effective use of Kubernetes namespaces. So by the time you do the deployment, you can uh, directly say uh, whether this particular data plane component need to be deployed on uh, this uh, data plane namespace and control plane components can be deployed in uh, control plane namespace. So basically APK understands namespaces. It can see namespaces. And uh, when it comes to Helm installation and the deployment part, uh, we can consider uh, namespaces as well. And also within the namespace boundaries, uh, these services can perform and provide API management services. And at the same time, if you consider the clusters, uh, so APK, you can deploy across cluster. So when we deploy APK across cluster, uh, it's no, it deploys across different clusters. So for example, uh, some of our uh, testings included uh, basically deploying uh, internal gateway in one cluster, external gateway in different cluster, and across these clusters, uh, cl uh, communication will happen. Uh, so these things are also supported. And custom resources that plays very special role in APK. Uh, with WS2 APK, uh, there are certain custom resources that we use to manage uh, APIs and applications. So we are adhering to uh, Kubernetes gateway specification as well. So they have some terms, uh, basically gateway, HTTP route, uh, TCP route, service, those kind of things. Uh, so we do support that as well. And uh, for the API management, we have introduced uh, specific uh, custom resources, uh, API application subscription uh, backend. So likewise, there are different uh, custom resources that we introduce. And through these custom resources, we made the API first class citizen in uh, Kubernetes ecosystem. So basically you can uh, use these custom resources effectively and uh, get you the full uh, first class experience in the Kubernetes ecosystem. Yeah, so these are the like, uh, uh, like uh, some details about uh, the namespaces, clusters and uh, custom resources and how we are using them within APK solution. Yes, based on that answer, I feel that WSO2 APK is a perfect solution for API management in Kubernetes. So thanks for that answer. With that, I would like to move to the next question. And uh, this is about the community engagement. So I would like to ask, how can developers and architects contribute to the WSO2 APK community and the future developments of it? Yeah. So WSO2 APK development uh, happened completely transparent and open way. So, uh, so our roadmaps, all the features uh, and uh, our development plans, iterations, all these things are public. 
So if you go to our APK JIT repository, you can see all the details about these things. And uh, as a developers, of course, you can contribute to our uh, feature roadmaps. Uh, and of course, you can do code contributions as well, uh, bug fixes. Uh, you can simply send a GitHub pull request and uh, we'll be reviewing and approving them. Uh, so we are very welcome that kind of uh, contributions. Uh, at the same time, uh, you can contribute to documentation. So in the documentation side, we basically explain how you can use the product. Uh, we document about different custom resources that we are using. Uh, you can contribute on that side as well. And apart from that, uh, you can report uh, issues. So we have a Discord channel. And also you can report uh, JIT issues. Uh, basically, if you encounter any bugs, any vulnerabilities or any issues that you face, um, you can uh, let them know. And also uh, testing related stuff. So basically when you test this for large load, uh, that kind of thing, uh, if you notice something, you can let us know. And also security related assessment, basically code scans. Uh, so there are some, uh, I mean, some already some contributors are doing uh, security scans and providing us reports and guiding us uh, and uh, helping us with the uh, fixing these issues. And also, uh, if you are using this for like a, a larger project or so internal your product development, uh, you can discuss about your requirements as well. So then we can see how we can help with you. And uh, if you are seeing any missing features, how we can include that for the uh, future releases as well. So likewise, uh, this is 100% uh, transparent, open. Uh, we are very welcome you all to contribute and uh, participate in this development and uh, technical related discussions as well. Yeah, I believe that's a great news to hear. So I think we can uh, we are we can include these links like the JIT repository, the D Discord links, and every community link in the description. So we would like to encourage you to visit those links and uh, to explore it by yourself. Uh, with what with what Sanjeev has said, so uh, with that uh, we will move to the next question. Uh, where can interested organizations and individuals learn more and get started with WSO two APK? Okay, yeah. So the main uh, so so WSO two APK documentation is the main place where you can get uh, like how how product work. Uh, our architecture, use cases, all these things we are documented there. And also uh, there are some articles explaining uh, why we wanted to invent something like APK, uh, like what is the history of gateways and where we are at right now. So there are like several articles as well. So if you can refer to WSO2 documentation and WSO2 articles, you can see uh, most of this uh, information. Okay. I believe uh, we can include that documentation link in the description box as well. So with that, uh, I would like to have the final question for you, Sanjeeva, which is why is Kubernetes API specification good? So in other words, I would like to ask uh, why we need to pay, pay attention to the Kubernetes API specification in this particular project. Yeah, yeah. So uh, this uh, Kubernetes API gateway specification is started some time back in, uh, over the last few years, it evolved. And uh, as a WC2 APK team, we also adapted that specification because we see there are a lot of good things. Uh, so standardization is one of the main thing. Uh, so this gateway specification provides a standardized and consistent interface for uh, interacting with uh, basically gateways and uh, services. So it, it makes things uh, stand rise. And also through this approach, uh, uh, one other main advantage that we, are, we can get is uh, interoperability. So if you are adhering to Kubernetes API specification, uh, then uh, the ecosystems and different tools, gateways, uh, we can uh, you know work with these things seamlessly because we are adhering to uh, same specification. And also we believe uh, there will be ecosystem expansion around this specification. Uh, there will be like a security related uh, products will come into play and they will also adapt uh, some security related stuff in this stand. Uh, and also let's say you want to like uh, adapt different gateways. Uh, so in that case also 
this particular specification will help you and also it provides uh, you know set of guidelines for guidelines and the standards for the uh, people who develop uh, gateways and also uh, community collaboration is one main advantage because there are like a lot of people join to this effort from different organizations so there are discussions going um, there are like so many discussions going on about uh, like how we can uh, support variety of protocols how we can uh, provide a variety of uh, authentication authorization related uh, uh, specifications so likewise uh, security governance uh, there are like a lot of discussions happening and uh, uh, like uh, top uh, industry professionals are contributing this specification so i think and uh, we believe uh, this specification will evolve very fast within next few years and uh, so it will become the de facto standard for the uh, gateway uh, gateways and gateway implementations so i think uh, uh, every organization or every gateway vendor should pay a bit attention to this specification and trying to you know uh, contribute and collaborate with the uh, specification yeah well Sanjeev, so I believe you answered all my questions in a comprehensive manner and thanks for your knowledge and experience and uh, all the answers for the questions. And uh, for, if you are watching this video on YouTube, so we will, we will be including all the necessary links and resources, resources in the description box. So feel free to visit those links and uh, explore our new product. And uh, if you have any questions, by the way, uh, you can comment below this uh, video and uh, we will be happy to answer the, those questions uh, with the help of Sanjeev and the other product team. So once again, Sanjeev, thanks for your time and uh, we would like to see you in the next video as well. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Jimmy.